Beach FM, locals talking to locals. On the telephone line, I've got the leader of the National Party, Judith Collins, on the line. And we welcome her to our programme this morning. Good morning, Judith. Oh, good morning, Nigel. Welcome to our programme. You've been a busy lady, obviously, and um, we're <laughs> so glad that you can find time to have a chat to us here on the Kapiti Coast. Now, what are your thoughts on the election so far? Are National in the right uh, frame of mind to get in or not? Uh, well, I believe we are, and it's absolutely important that everyone who wants a National-led government does who picks blue doesn't mess around. <laughs> right. And you're getting the feeling that up here on the Cavity Coast where we've got uh, new incumbents for the Otaki electorate uh, mm-hmm. in all areas, um, you're, of course, uh, new man Tim Costley. How do you feel he'll fare against the opposition? Well, we did uh, very well with him before the second COVID lockdown was a uh, massive public meeting. And I see I've got another one today with him at 11.45 at the Waikanae Bowling Club. And what I'm hearing from everybody that is that he's working very, very hard and they're really, really pleased to have him coming in. Yes, well, he's been bringing out the reasons why he's standing, etc. I've had him on the air several times and spoken to him. But um, we know all about the roading issues, etc. If National doesn't get in as the uh, party to lead the country, how are you going to tell Labour that we need uh, electrification from Waikanae to Otaki, we need uh, extra roads from Otaki to North Levin. Are you going to be able to convince them that they need to spend the money on that? Well, I don't think that they are capable of being convinced because their whole mantra is about light rail in Auckland. And so understanding that actually the rest of the country needs um, electrification and also roading. Uh, So I think what we'll see from them if they do get in heaven forbid, um, is more of the same from the Labour Greens sort of alliance, which seems to be very anti-roads and be getting you know, big on promises and no ability to get them accomplished. So we've just got to make sure that we, it doesn't happen. I see Labour and Greens this morning said they're very keen on keeping our capital connection. If you're not familiar with that, that's Palmerston to Wellington. They want to see that continue on. Uh, well, that would be nice, I'm sure. Right, so we'll keep that one in our mind. Now, just looking yeah. further afield, though, I'm you know raising issues that you'll be talking about today when you come to the Waikanae Bowling Club. Mm-hmm. But um, age benefits, raise it or leave it as it is. Now, that's something that's been talked about in our community. I live in a retirement village, and there's always thoughts that, uh, well, the age might lift for superannuation. Is that something in your well, mind? it's certainly been something that we've talked about before, and that's in about 17 years' time, so it's not going to affect anybody in the age um, situation at the moment, but it, it will eventually, I think, at some stage move up, but not in any immediate future and certainly wouldn't affect anyone who's currently uh, receiving it or will be receiving it in the next 17 years. Yeah, sure, fair enough. Medical facilities for Kapiti, we're not saying we want a hospital, but we do need some upgraded medical facilities here with the population yep. booming at the moment. Judith, uh, what are your thoughts from National's point of view on that? Well, we're obviously, I mean, I, I, I'm not, um, not going to make it up on, on the hoof on it, but I think what's really clear is that where we have people moving, particularly from cities uh, to more provincial areas like Otaki, we are going to have to make sure that we have sufficient um, medical facilities available. Yes, well, even Levin, I mean, they're bringing in refugees into Levin, and that's going to be a big number mm. turning up there. So, I mean, when we talk about uh, Otaki Electric, no, just not cavity medical system, but uh, services, mm. but also up in the heart of That's right. See, there's no point just putting people there without facilities. Border controls, likelihood of lifting under national, and when? Well, it's really clear that we do need to be able to uh, bring people in, particularly international students and high-end tourism, but also specialist specialist workers for horticulture, agriculture, and in other areas such as engineering. Um, The economy is about to go through a very difficult time, and that is primarily caused by the second lockdown. Um, So from my point of view, we have a border protection agency in place. We'll make sure we have test people before they get on planes. And we'll be making sure that when we promise to have staff in the border facilities tested, we would actually do that. So these are the sorts of things we need to do. We are told now that there's some vaccine somewhere at some stage possibly coming out. 
but in the meantime we still need to get the economy moving but without putting anyone's safety at risk. I see Minister of Education Chris uh, Hipkins said he's going to bring or allow 250 overseas students to come into New Zealand but they've got to pay for their I suppose isolation when they come into New Zealand. Is that... Well, uh, so they should. Yeah. Well, so they should and, and the other thing is that Nigel and we um, said that in about July and um, we then criticised for doing it by the current government so I think you know they, they're, they're changing their views as they move along. So going into quarantine, they're having to pay for it. Do you think that's going to encourage students to come to New Zealand or not? Well, I think they uh, will have to pay for it. We can't continue to fund this. It's already costing about $600 million, all of which is borrowed money and which we paid back by our children and grandchildren. And I see where they're suggesting that universities should be um, putting up some money to encourage students to come, but I don't think the universities have got the money to do that, have they? No, well, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So you'd be quite keen to see a lot more come in, especially for our growers. I mean, we need some pickers and things like that. Would you be inviting absolutely. foreign workers into absolutely. New Zealand? Yes, absolutely. Those that need it, and we also need to make sure that they are quarantined or managed isolation. And a lot of the growers, as you know, already have their own facilities. They could be managed and they could be checked and make sure that they are being compliant. This is not impossible. It just needs to be able to have people in charge who know how to get things done. I mean, the cost of paying back this money for New Zealand is going to take years. Have we got the ability, or has your finance minister got the ability to see us through this, should you get into the uh, well, it, power? It, it's going to, our plan would have us back to a reasonable level of debt and by 2034. Um, the current government doesn't have any plan to get us back into a reasonable level of debt. So your minister uh, has, has got the ability, Paul Goldsmith, Absolutely. to be able to direct us back into that... Um, Absolutely. The yeah. only way to do it, Nigel, is to grow the economy. Yeah. We can't do it by simply taxing people. Yeah. So we will not have a wealth tax which will hit um, the retired people, particularly those with assets um, over a million dollars and worth, and they will be hit because that is actually the plan. The Green Party and the Green and Labour has you know that they want to tax people more. Provincial growth fund. Now, would you have a provincial growth fund should you get into power? Well, I don't think we're going to need it because of the huge amount of infrastructure that we are wanting to get built, either roading or water and all those all other sorts of things. But I can tell you what, we're going through tough economic times. Now is not the time to be just spending $3 billion without expecting anybody to actually get anything necessarily done. So we know also is quite a lot of the growth fund um, that was promised has not actually been delivered yet. So we, you know, obviously we'd commit, you know, keep those commitments. But the big, big is that we're putting around infrastructure and health and education funding, particularly around building schools, 4.8 billion dollars. That is going to be a huge um, boost to the region. Certainly is, and we need a new school or possibly a college here up on the Kapiti Coast, especially in Waikanae. Is that something on your agenda? I'm not specifically going to name it, but it's very important that we have that funding done because we know we do need to do this. We've put that aside and we've got it um, allocated. Right. The PGF fund, uh, this is a comment that's been heard around here. I mean, a lot of that money just recently has been announced for churches, marais and halls. Is that a good uh, use of that money? Well, no, it's particularly during the time of actually voting. To me, it verges on corruption of the system and make it very plain. This is entirely unacceptable behaviour. Right. So, our Tim Costley, we're looking forward to uh, his contribution to our area. Will he fit into the National uh, Caucus or into a position of... Uh, or has he got to learn the ropes? I mean, this is new but for they've anybody. They've always got to learn the ropes. Yeah. <laughs> but he will be given a... Uh, a role and a portfolio if, he, if we're in opposition if we're in government um, he'll be learning the right even more <laughs> Right, Judith we're looking forward to meeting up with you today you're at the Waikanae Bowling Club and um, yep. uh, people can pop along and ask you the questions and uh, you'll no doubt be able to Thanks. respond to them thank you very Thanks much you for your... see you Bye. later bye bye Judith Collins 106.3 Beach FM